Dean, uh, what are your recollections of getting into the customizing business? Was 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 it a family business, or did you start it up on yourself? How did you get into car customizing? Well, at that era, I was born and raised in Linwood, California. Compton, Long, awful lot of stunt work are doing um, a little bit of movie stuff, TV stuff, very small. Everything was strictly drag racing and hot rods and stuff. So that's where I started too, in About Linwood, what California. What time was that? About what well, you're looking at 19, probably 55. Right, right around 54. there. 54, yeah. Okay, and then you, when did you open up your current shop that you have in, in LA? Well, I started in Linwood. And I was on Atlantic Boulevard. Nothing good area, no. And then I packed my bags and I went to Hollywood. And I ended up getting a shop there, a little. Then I moved on Sunset Boulevard right there. And then from there, I just started taking anything and everything, trying to get into movie work. Because it was the best, and you would get to build very strange things and different things. and and. You know, trying to crawl up that ladder. Do you remember so, which car put you over the top? Which car made you a, a, a household name among car enthusiasts? Which one was the first one that made people recognize you? Well, the one to try to win it all was the Oakland Roaster Show. And to do that, you had to be the best car. The best car of the year. Well, I won the damn thing. And that was extremely, I tried to design something that nobody had done, and that's number one, all aluminum. Number two, non-symmetrical, off balance. I was trying to make something, I didn't know what I was doing. I had ever built a complete car, nothing, didn't know that much about it. So from it, I learned that way. Which car won? Right here. This one right here, so this is the one that? That's the first one that made me clicking, so got that's... me up. Looking at that car from the front, it is asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. What was your logic, what was your reason behind making it asymmetrical when so many cars are symmetrical? Well, trying to make something that nobody had done. And why would they do it? Because nobody thought, they thought that was wrong. Everything balances, right? That's why your body's made and everything. Well, everything. No, I said, I gotta come up with something different. And to do that, you gotta make it Completely different. Does so it still I, handle and perform? Well Grand Prix Maserati was what the car, the running gear. I ended up with two of those. I got them over from Europe. It was just a old time. They weren't up to date or nothing. Then I ran into my best friend in the world, Carol Shelby. He got the motors for me, and from there I just grew the dumb thing and went to took off with it. You know? <laughs> This car was featured in a movie called Bikini Beach with uh, Frankie Avalon and Annette Funicello. How did that happen? Well, it was right at the beginning. I just got the car all done. And it hadn't gone to no shows, hadn't showed anybody or nothing. So we took it right here, went down with, there was a, a TV show. Uh, I can't say, I can't say the name right now. Big time name. So they took my car that night and put it on a film, and we used it all on TV, and it went off. Did really good. Right from there, if we hadn't gone no place or nothing else. Went right to the Oakland Road Show, and that's when I and won that's the show. And filming it? Yeah. Wow. And that's where the whole thing started. Wow. Yeah, it's awesome to see that on the screen. But it was, I didn't know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just trying to do something that nobody had done, you know? Right. So I tried that. Let's talk about the Monkey Mobile. Um, I guess it was Columbia Pictures approached you. Did they provide you with two matching Pontiac GTOs, 66 GTOs? What what instructions did you have to create the Monkey Mobile, and what inspired the look of the Monkey Mobile? Well, they came and they had a pickup or a little station wagon truck. That was when they were doing the tests and trying to see who kids and they had hundreds of kids there trying to be the part. They had no idea, so they asked me to come up with something that would be good for this car to be these four kids. Didn't know any more than what you're saying right now. 
So I said, okay, I'll come up with something. We'll figure out something, and we can do it. So he says, okay, get it as soon as you can, because we got to do the pilot. So I said, okay. So I sit there with a couple of sketches and stuff like that. Finally, the, the guy said, we got to get going with it because we got to have it. I work night and day, and I grew it and with just the sketching and stuff. And that from there, we made the, the monkey mobile. So you made a pair of them, right? Within like, Two at the a, same time. In a month, less than a month, right? Well, they give me two new cars, brand Frank and new Pontiac. Do you remember what color they were? Blue. They were both blue when you got them. Guess a blue about that color right there. What made you make, uh, decide to make them red? Because I had to come up with something very unique, I, and I didn't want no candy apples or nothing like that. I wanted to get a kind of oddball color. Didn't know what. And red is a very always a strong color, and people notice it. Red big time. Always has cars and stuff. And you stretched the car out. Was it to accommodate surfboards? Did you want to surf? Well, look, what you made you look stretch at it? When it stretches, there's only thing is stretch. There's a little thing on the back, a little thing on the front. That's the exact stock distance still oh, wow. to this day. Not not at all cut. Nothing. Even the roof, <coughs> all I did was bend it, cut it, and slat it up. Right. Added. Same back end, everything's exactly the same. When the, when the show went out of production, I think it was on the air for two years, I read that they offered the cars back to you. Why did they not wind up back in your hands? What happened there? The reason is I have the rights. Whenever I design or draw or do, I own it. I have the rights to buy it, if that's the case. And this is the same thing with the monkeys, the green ornament, all that stuff. I own the, the design and the rights, or I don't do it. All my cars, all my shit. So what well, all they did with that thing, they says, this car is up for sale now. So we're, they were trying to sell it back to you? Sell it, because the dollars went out. I know all the main people that started and did the whole thing. So I said, no, I don't. I don't want to pay for something like that. If I do, I'll build another one to get it done next week. Because it ain't that big of a thing to me. Rather than me go pay. Right. And that's all it was. So that's when they ended up, and I think George grabbed one. George bought one. And the other one, well, that ended up totally wrong because they took, and they went to Australia. Yes. And they took the four monkey guys there and did the thing. When they got done with it, that's my car. I own it, the whole works. And they left it right there. The car was gone. So they ended up in Australia. Then from there, it went to Cuba. And that's ended up with a military man, ended up with the thing and restored it and got it. So Still that's, there. That one's in New York now. One yes. One is in New York. The second one was in George Barris' shop for 40 years. He ended up uh, doing, a, a, what do they call that, 100-point res restoration or something like that. What is your opinion of, of that particular car and how it looks today? Do you feel it still captures the spirit of the original? or? Well, I think he's wrong, and I don't care who it is. When you got something very unique, or not necessarily a monkey mobile or not, but something that's very unique, you put it right back the same. 100 pointer, try to make it a 100 pointer. Not parts or nothing. That's what's wrong with the monkey mobile that you're talking about. Because the top's all wrong. I, I don't discuss it. I don't want to talk about it. Well, the car is now in the hands of a fan who is passionate about the Monkeys TV yeah. show. He shows the car to people, he drives it. Are you happy to see it in the hands of the guy now who, who seems to appreciate your work so much? Extremely, yes. He's a very nice guy. Extremely nice about it. And I just come back at him all the time, and I'm not getting at him or nothing. I just say, well, you just got to get it back to where it's supposed to be. I said, somebody got a hold of it wrong, did some things that is not, not right. And when you have something like that, and it's a very nostalgic piece of equipment or something, put it back because it's quite neat, you know. But it's, I says, you got to do it. You got to change it. That's all.
What, what if he brought it back to you? Would you be willing to restore yeah, what are you it? What talking about? You, Dad, you well, it ain't different? that big of a thing. Well, uh, the biggest, the body, he didn't change it. He didn't wreck the roof, the windshield or nothing. All the back end's still the same. He just turned around and changed and put different tires and wheels. They put all white on the top and white interior. Now, that's 100% wrong. Right. You don't need to do that. Then he put a bunch of garbage stuff on the dash inside. I don't think that's good. I think when you go to restore a car, you should always put it right back and make it a hundred pointer. Right. The one that's in New York, is that closer to your vision? Is that closer to the original? But I think it? it is exactly the same. Oh, okay, so that one's been relatively yes. untouched. Yeah. See, that one wheel, I mean one car, was when we did it, I did a 671 blower and did a wheelie. That was going to be used in the all, every time on the TV, on the commercial, and on the old stuff. Well, one day that was the end of that because oh, right. those kids couldn't handle. It. <laughs> There's no way they could handle. It. They're just not drivers like that. Right. So we changed and took the 671 out of it. And it was just stock. Yeah. yeah. Talk about the uh, talk about the Black Beauty. What went into the Black Beauty? Um, talk about the history of the Black Beauty. Well, that was the same thing. They just called and wanted me to come up with a Black Beauty car for that comedy thing, which was a little magazine thing, right? Yeah, based on the comic book, yeah. And that's where it all took off from. Well, jo Dozier, I think it's Charles Dozier. The same guy who did Batman. Yeah. He owned all that stuff extremely nice man too and just said you got to come up with something unique well i don't know and you don't you don't have very much money you know it's cheap so we can only do so much according to that and so he says well this we need to come up with whatever so from that i caught a hold of the people from chrysler and told them i says i need something like that you have anything that could possibly I could use for a TV. He says, oh yeah, we'll get it. Pick whatever you want. So there were two brand new ones. So from that, I just took it in the shop and started whacking away and cut the top and cut the front ends and threw it bumpers. Because I didn't like, and still today, bumpers are dumb. Right. And so big, big lights and big chromes and stuff, I would throw that stuff away. What about the gadgets and stuff? Did that come from you or did that come from the writers? No, they asked, they, they wanted, they didn't tell me how to do it. They told me what they wanted to do. They wanted the rockets and they had to do this and they had to shoot this uh, grease stuff on all the time. And they had to shoot flames out of this. Well, from that, that's all I did was design it to, to make it work. Yeah. Right. Fortunately, the, the show only lasted one season, but the car has become a legend, and it was featured in the new movie that came out in 2011. Did you see the movie, and did you like how the car was used in the movie? Well, I haven't seen the movie, so I can't say yes or no. Yeah. Uh, I just heard from people, and I just listened to it. I don't say nothing, because I can't say something that I don't know. Right. You know? Well, how does it feel to have your work remembered 40, 50 years later, people know these cars by name. They know your name. A guy like me who grew up in Hamtramck, Michigan, knows your name. How does that make you feel that people are so familiar with your work, appreciate your work, and appreciate you? How do you feel about that? I think it's extremely, to me, I started from very nothing in my life. My mom and dad, we started in Linwood, California, which was a nothing little area. And he was a truck driver. And from that, I had to do all the greasy work and do the motor stuff, and I hated and all. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just a kid. And from that, I got to roll, crawl up that ladder. And from that, I kept trying to get something better and bigger in my life, you know? Right. And so. Still today doing it. <laughs> you still said you go to your shop twice a week? Every day. Yeah. Every day. I enjoy the hell out of it. I'm doing one now that nobody's ever, ever, Spielberg. I did Roger Rabbit. Yeah. 
Well, I'm doing another thing for him. It's unbelievable. To, for me, it's unbelievable because it's a very big project, extreme big. And he's the tops. I think he's the tops. Oh, yeah. He did very well at everything he touches. Yeah. Um, you have a team of people that work at your shop that will continue your legacy for a long time? Yes, when I have, there's a lot of talented people still out there. And I try to bring them in when we go to do something because they know what they're doing. They know we don't have to have problems. We don't have to throw that away and redo it. You know, when they do it, they do it once and, and you're done. That's awesome. So that's quite, it's quite neat to know these people, really. Thank you very much. Well, I thank you. That's a pleasure to meet you for the first time. I'm so well, happy to meet you. If you're in that area, call her at me.